Alright, so first there's just a clean, so let's put down the clean. Just to sort of clean up because we're we're working now with a very high resolution uh, mesh. So consider that points. And we'll just like clean some overhanging points and uh, remove some attributes and a few some points so that you can see this already starts taking taking quite a while because we're just working with such a heavy mesh. So this is where file caching sort of comes in, right? So that's kind of why you want to uh, do file caching because you can see this is getting quite slow. I'm just gonna gonna do that. So let's talk a little bit about what happens afterwards. So you see there's this for each loop with a measure and as we promote you might think like, but that's a little bit random. Like why, why am I doing that? Well, if you're looking in here, you see there's, uh, well, because of course we're using volumetric noises, you can see there's, there's some stuff that's floating in the air. It doesn't really make sense to have pieces that are floating, right? So you kind of want to, well, not stuff, have stuff not float. So that's what we're doing inside of the for each. So let's put a for each connected piece. So then it puts down the connectivity, which makes a class attribute for each connected piece. So we can have a look at it if we want. Maybe we want to do a file cache before before uh, before we're doing this, just to make the whole process a little bit faster. What we can alternatively do instead of file caching is we, you also have this, if you hover over it, you have this freeze icon. If you freeze it, then it will lock these things inside of the Houdini file. So then the Houdini file will be super heavy, but it will lock anything you do inside of the Houdini file there. Let me first quickly go through if I use the adaptivity here. So, okay, yeah, so let's first do that. So let's use a little bit of adaptivity. Um, so like we saw in the Houdini, uh, in the VDB, part of the course. Adaptivity just lowers the resolution a little bit of your mesh. So that'll make the, whole, the parts after it a little bit faster. So yeah, now we have uh, 864,000 points instead of 2 million. So that's a little bit better. So let's freeze that, let's save. So now our hip file will probably be quite heavy. So you can see our hip file is now 25 megabytes. All right, so let's continue. So inside of this for each, what we're doing here is we're gonna measure something. We're gonna measure the area. So let's put down a measure. So remember for each, so if you want to know more about for each, I explained that a little bit more in the uh, in the exclusive uh, part about the bridge that I mentioned earlier. Um, so we're gonna, we're, I'm explaining more about for, for each loops over there inside of the, uh, inside of the exclusive part for Patreons. So anyway, so you can see it's going to run over this piece and it's going to measure something. So it's going to measure the area. So it's going to make an attribute called area. So we can go into geometry spreadsheet, primitives. And you can see we have for each primitive. So each of these primitives will have an attribute for the area. So that's this. But we don't want it for each primitive. We want, we want the overall area for this entire piece. Because if we know how big it is, then we can maybe remove it. Because if we go back here, like the only pieces that are floating are very small disconnected pieces. And we want to get rid of these small disconnected pieces, right? We don't want to get rid of the big connected stuff. So that's why we're going to measure the overall sort of volume of this thing. And then we can remove it. So there's a whole bunch of, so with the measure sub, you can measure a whole bunch of stuff. So there's actually now also a volume measurement. Uh, let's have a look at that. So I never, this is new inside of Houdini 18, but for now, let's just use the area. That's what I used here. But I guess volume measurements uh, could make more sense in this case. Let's just use area for now, because this will just measure the area of, the, of each of these surfaces, and then we could add it all up. So that's what we're doing in here with the attribute promote. So I mentioned that before. 
Um, I don't remember exactly in which episode, by, but you can go from, if you go from primitive to detail, primitive to area, what it will do is uh, the detail attribute will be on the whole thing. So instead of each individual primitive, it will be on the whole thing. So we go over here. And then we only have one attribute. So right now it's taking the average. And if we're going to go over here for primitive, so the, so the, and we don't really want the average, right? We want everything added up. So instead of putting it to average, let's put it to sum. So sum will sum up all of these, all of these parts. So then you can see the summed up area is 0 0.1. And now we're lucky because this is a very small part. So we, we can already have a, so we could probably use this as a, um, as our overall thing to say that, oh, if it's, um, if it's, if it's below a certain threshold, let's remove it. So then we can run this over the entire thing. So it's gonna think a little bit. You can see it's gonna, so now every, Part will have a summed up attribute. So let's go to scene view. Oh, we need to, by the way, we need to promote it back to primitive else it will remain on the entire thing. So we need to go back from detail to primitive. Let's put it to auto update. But of course we do want it to be on the primitive else because else we're gonna have one of the attributes on the entire thing. So we don't want that. So let's go about back here to primitive. Now you can see we have an area for each of these rocks. So let's go down here. And you can see most of these have the same value because those are the are part of the same big interconnected thing. But there's a couple that have very small values that are different. So those are the ones we want to remove. So when you look at these values, so probably what we first want to, what we want to do is we want to use something called an assemble. So what assemble will do? Uh, so what assemble will do is it will pack our geometry. So similar to what the copy to points did, when we're gonna pack, I'm gonna go out of this thing. I'm gonna put it. So, sim uh, so this will just pack uh, pack all of these pieces. So let's put it, create pack geometry and create name attribute. So this will just um, create a name attribute for each of the connected pieces. So let's have a look. So now you can see, I can select, this is the big part, and then there's these smaller parts that are individually packed. But I do want to transfer some attributes because right now they will be, be treated as a point. So you can see there's nothing, like our, our attribute is not over there anymore. It's not over here. So we want to transfer some attributes. So we want to transfer the area. Okay, so it is here, but it's, uh, it's still on the primitive and that's fine. So let's promote it to point. This is easier to work with because then we can do it inside of a point fob. So at your promote, go from primitive to point. Let's go to area. Okay, and now we can either do this in a wrangle, like I did there. Let's hide this because it is going to recook. So I did this in a wrangle, or I can just do it inside of delete. This may be easier. So let's go over here. Put it to auto update. And we can put it to delete by expression and have a look at these values. So we probably want to say that if the area is below 1000, we want to delete it. All right, so now we deleted everything below 1000. And now you can see we're left with just one point. And at one point is this, well, is this big main thing. So we now we don't have really have any floating stuff. So everything right now will be connected. So that's nice. Now we let's unpack it again. So we don't want to necessarily keep this packed. I mean, sometimes you do want to get it packed, but we can use uh, attribute delete. Want to delete some attributes because we don't really need some of the stuff that we had. So we don't need the area, we don't need the class, and we don't need the name. Those were just placeholder 
attributes, right? We only use those to 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 make sure that we could delete some of these uh, some of these things. And let's put an uh, output. And now you could probably file cache this. Say file cache. to be the uh, big rock tutorial. There's probably one more thing that we want to do, by the way, before we do this, but let's just first save it. Okay, so one more thing that I kind of needed to explain was uh, I touched upon that uh, briefly before, is that over here, what I'm doing is I have this, this stuff that's being booleaned out, so we get this main shape. But of course, in my final render, I'm looking sort of, I want to look so I'm in, I'm like behind this rock, but if I like if I put my camera like this, you can see it's I cannot really look into the ocean floor. There's not really a sort of open opening which we can sort of like have a nice view. So that's what I did just manually is that I added a box here. I just edited the box a bit, add some mountain stuff, transformed it, and then I'm bullying it out of the thing. So you can see. This whole part is just me manually cutting out that part with a boolean. And of course, it's it's still procedural because like this part will just stay static, but depending if I change the seed, it will just just that part will always be cut out. So let's me let's undo that. So then at least I get something that's like if I put my camera that I could have something sort of looking looking out over the ocean floor so that's kind of why i did why i did that uh so yeah i guess we are like over here you could edit it in as well or you could leave it out depending on the look you're after you could also i guess go for more of a composition where you're like looking through it like this and it's sort of hidden behind the rock um so that's that's what I initially tried with uh, as well. So I have some early renders. Uh, maybe I'll put those in like the extras. Uh, but I had some early renders where stuff where the squid was like coming from behind your rocks, and I thought it would be like all being all mysterious. Uh, but it didn't end up working that well. So yeah. Okay. So here's the uh, it's like some some early render that I that I had. Uh, why is it clear? I'm just going to put the error in over there. I'm not sure why it's erroring. So you can see over here, this was a very early render, but you can see it was sort of, uh, and it's looking pretty ugly. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so you can see that uh, the thing, the idea was that this thing would like be hidden behind this rock, but I ended up cutting away this rock as I didn't really like the way it looked. And uh, you can, like, I'm going to make a, like a video, a Patreon exclusive video, which you can find at the end. Which is gonna go over a lot of more of these uh, work in progress things that might help you sort of see the process that you kind of go through when you make something like this. But uh, anyway, so that's why I cut the uh, cut the thing away. So um, yeah, so anyway, that's the uh, that's uh, how the rocks were done. So of course, a big part of these rocks are the, is the material as well. We're gonna get into that more in a little bit. Uh, when we start doing more of the uh, lighting and shading. Let's dive into the next video where we're gonna talk a little bit about the basics of how lighting and shading works, how stuff with cameras work, and just... Uh, so we're gonna step away from these assets for a little bit and just go over back to the basics, back to the basics, back to the old school. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. See you in the next video.